Canola oil is a genetically engineered and rebranded version of rapeseed oil, an oil that was banned in 1956 because it stunts growth in animals. Cottonseed oil is an industrial byproduct from the manufacturing of cotton, which used to be discarded as waste until someone found a way to sell it as an edible food-like substance that they call vegetable oil, even though there's nothing vegetable about it. Funny enough, these oils do come from a plant where they use high temperature, high pressure, and solvents like hexane to extract your food from plant matter. Most vegetable oil comes from genetically modified soybeans, which is also not a vegetable and primarily consists of inflammatory omega-6 fatty acids. The majority of corn, soybean, palm kernel, peanut, safflower, sunflower oil, these are all the cheapest oils industrial manufacturers have been able to create in large quantities. The emphasis is on mass production and profits. Health is a secondary consideration at best. Subscribe and check out my page for part two where I explain how these industrial oils cause disease in the body. When you dream at night, your mind creates an alternate universe, places your conscious awareness inside of its own creation, and then disconnects you from the fact that you created it. Your memories of laying in bed an hour ago are no longer available. Whether you're awake or you're dreaming, your unconscious mind is in control of the switchboard which determines what memories and what sensory information you have access to. While you're experiencing the creation of your mind, it seems real. It seems like the most real thing you know. You can't remember anything else more real. This is what your mind does automatically, without your permission, and without any advance warning. When you dream, your mind creates an earth for you to walk on, your mind creates a body with a brain and five senses, and yes, your mind even creates other people for you to talk to and interact with. And even though your mind has created these other people in your dream world, you do not necessarily know who they are, what they're going to say, or what they're going to do, just like in your waking life. How do you know you're not dreaming right now? Because... Most of our disease, obesity, and brain fog is caused by overconsumption of foods that come from factories. It's very hard to overconsume meat, beans, vegetables, and get fat on whole foods like this, but give me a sleeve of Oreos and I can smash 3,000 calories and still be hungry afterwards. The two most toxic things that come out of factories which you should immediately eliminate if you're trying to turn your life around are any kind of refined sugar and industrial seed oil, which they call vegetable oil even though there ain't nothing vegetable about it. Share if you're into it. Follow for more. Fasting is the single most effective tool I've found for losing weight, sharpening the mind, and healing the body. If you're trying to turn your life around, this is a great place to start. I started with intermittent fasting, and all I did was push breakfast back from my usual 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Then when I got used to that, I moved it back to 10, then 11, and in a couple of months, I was going all the way until noon without eating or even feeling like I needed to eat. The most popular and easily doable intermittent fasting protocol involves eating all your food for the day in an 8-hour window and not consuming any calories or food for 16 hours outside of that. So once you can make it till noon without eating and be done with dinner by 8, now you've eaten all your food in an 8-hour window and can fast with your body and hormones in fat-burning mode for 16 hours. You cannot burn fat while the storage hormone insulin is present. Fasting keeps insulin at bay and allows your body to run on the pounds worth of stored fat instead of constant new food coming in. Share if you're into it. Follow for more. There is nothing on this earth, no diet plan, no supplement, no exercise protocol that torches stubborn fat faster than fasting. Eating triggers the release of insulin and halts fat burning. Even if you've eaten keto, you still need to process and burn that meal before you get to the stored fat. If you think reducing calories is a good idea, do it all in one day as a fast so that your metabolism doesn't slow down to adjust to a lower daily caloric intake. Why do you think your body stores fat in the first place? As a survival mechanism, your body stores fat to be released and burned at a time when food is not available. Fasting changes your body's hormonal state and releases that stubborn fat storage. Don't let someone BS you into believing your body isn't designed to go without food. The fact that you're probably carrying several weeks worth of food around your waist is evolutionary evidence to the contrary. Start slow and ease into it. Share if you're into it. Follow for more. If you're looking for the truth, I'll tell you where it is. It's in the uncharted territory of your mind. But be warned, once you step into this uncharted territory, there's a hell of a lot of swamp to get through. It is not easy to navigate, and you'll spend a lot of time feeling like you're lost or you're stuck. This is why most people don't attempt this or get very far if they do. You'll experience severe doubt in the direction that you're going. You'll want to go back, but then it's very hard to forget the glimpses of truth that you've seen. 
you'll feel like you can't go back knowing what you now know, but then you can't go forward because you don't know which way that is. It's very much like trying to use a compass at the North Pole. This is the path of a seeker. Followers are in groups and usually know what to do. They do what everyone else is doing. Seekers are alone in the swamp. Share if you're into it. Subscribe for more. You're stuck because you don't know how to get yourself to do the things that you know you should be doing. That's your problem. And your problem with your problem is that you're trying to solve it analytically by talking yourself into doing things. But it's not your analytical mind that's running the show. Have you noticed that when you're feeling empowered and good about yourself and good about life, you tend to do more of the things that you know you should be doing automatically? It's all about the vibes. It's all about your state of mind. When your vibes are high, bad things bounce right off of you and your mind is more inclined to come up with constructive ideas along with the motivation and desire to carry them through. Your mind will automatically serve up both empowering and disempowering thoughts and feelings. Your vibes are low because you haven't figured out how to let go of the disempowering thoughts and beliefs that you're holding on to. This is why you're stuck, and this is why I preach meditation, mindfulness, and visualization, because it teaches you to let go of the thoughts and feelings that don't serve you, and it reinforces the ones that do. You get good at maintaining elevated vibes by deliberately practicing every day. Some researchers wanted to know more about human behavior and herd mentality, so they bring five monkeys into their lab to experiment on. They place some bananas on a string hanging from the ceiling with a ladder leading up to them, tantalizing. So one monkey goes up the ladder to grab the bananas, and the researchers spray all the other monkeys with cold water. It's very unpleasant. After a couple rounds of this, the next time someone tries to climb up the ladder, the other monkeys grab him, pull him down, and beat him for even trying. Then the researcher swapped out one of the monkeys, and the first thing the new monkey sees is, Oh, wow, look at those bananas! So he goes for them. As per the local custom, he gets an ass whooping for this, so he learns that's a no-no. Then they swap another monkey, and the same process unfolds. Even the new monkey, who's never been hosed, participates in the beating. This continues until all the original monkeys are replaced, and none of the new monkeys have ever been hosed or have any idea why the ass whoopings are being handed out. There's a lot of monkeys in the world today who will chastise and verbally beat other monkeys who do things differently than the herd, even though the herd needs diversity to survive. Share if you're into it. Follow for more. The biggest mistake I see people making with meditation is complicating it to the point that they don't do it consistently. It doesn't matter if you're standing or sitting. Eyes open, eyes closed. Background music, quiet. Five minutes, 45 minutes parked in your car or sitting in your special meditation place. These are all details. Meditation is the practice of letting go of thoughts as they arise, and you can do this anytime or anywhere. Every time you catch your monkey mind wandering off and you bring it back to focusing in the present moment, you're doing it right and you're making progress. Share if you're into it. Follow for more. My favorite part about going down these conspiracy rabbit holes is the overwhelming amount of evidence they stack up demonstrating that things are absolutely not the way they seem. This is where the evidence piles up and eventually you get to the point where you realize that the mainstream narrative is more likely to not be true than to be true. And then the doors of curiosity and speculation open. It's pretty easy to get the first half right and point out all the incongruent bullshit, but then filling in the actual details gets really tricky really quick because we don't have most of the information that's being kept from us. There's plenty of truth hiding in plain sight, but you can't see it because the water is muddied with misinformation. So what do we do? First, I say we grow a pair, do some critical thinking, and come up with our own theories and explanations about what's happening in the world instead of just drinking the Kool-Aid that's being handed out. Second, I say we learn how to talk about our beliefs with people who believe differently than us. Open, positive, constructive communication is the answer. Without that, we're stuck in the mud. Share if you're into it. Follow for more.